Hey there, welcome back to The Sims Resource. So today we're going to be learning how to install The Sims 3 onto your Mac in 2023, which is actually kind of important because I recently got back into The Sims 3 and I really wanted to play it on my Mac, so this is a real-time request from me. Um, anyway, yeah, so I'm showing you on this page. So last August, EA released a 64-bit version of the game, specifically for Mac. Um, if you're on Windows, you can install either 64 or 32-bit. It should run fine regardless, but on the Mac version, you're going to have to get the 64-bit version if you have a above, I think, Mac OS Catalina or an Apple M1 Silicon chip instead of an Intel chip. You'll know this, um, A, either when you bought your computer, pretty much all the newer Mac have the Silicon chips, or if you click on the little Apple button in the top left corner of your computer and then hit About, um, it'll tell you your OS and also the basic specs of your computer. So here we are, um, that's the regular Sims 3 as you can see, I can't install it, but I can install the 64-bit version. If this version isn't appearing in your origin library, then you can just get in contact with EI support. They should be able to help you over chat. It took me like probably less than 10 minutes for them to get back to me and to help me out and then it appeared in my origin. So highly recommend seeking them out, they're really helpful. Um, you're gonna have to go through one of these little click screens for every single expansion pack you have. So. Just a heads up, I have all the expansion packs on Steam, but because the Steam download doesn't work for Mac, just heads up, yeah, if you get the game on Steam, you will not be able to install it on a Mac. You can only install it on Windows, but on Origin, you can use both. Um, but yeah, so I only had to do it a couple times because these were my original games that I had on disc. Crazy, isn't it? Oh my God. None of my computers today even have disc drives. And yep, from there, we are just going to start the download. As you can see here, I'm literally just waiting for it to start clicking along. It took me like 45 minutes to install the base game, but I was also sitting right next to my router. So take that as you will. Depending on the strength of your internet connection, it may be a really fast download or it may not be a very fast download. I'm on a laptop, so I didn't plug into ethernet, but I guess if I'd done that, it would have been a lot faster. And then you can see here I am, I'm just installing Supernatural and all of my other expansion packs. I think I have four or five installing. Each pack took me about five minutes to install. Somewhere from about that, <laughs> I think seasons took the longest. I was closer to 10 just because there's so many like features that came with that pack. And the five packs I was installing were I think Late Night, Supernatural, Seasons, and Generations. And oh, there's one more. What was it? Maybe Island Paradise. I had a fifth pack. That's all I know. Um, <laughs> and yeah, these are all for my disc days back in the day when I had a computer with a disc drive, which really tells you how long ago it was because so few computers now even come with disc drives. I wanted to try and play one of my games a couple months ago and I had to order a separate disc drive to run it. So I figured it was finally time to upgrade to the 64-bit version. Also, as a heads up, because it appears as a new game in your library, you're going to have to re-download the whole thing. If that hasn't been obvious enough so far, you have to re-download the entire game and you're going to have to transfer over any saves, any families, any builds, anything that you care about that you want to switch between your games. You're going to have to transfer it over because on your MacBook, it's considered essentially like a separate file. Like it is completely separate from the original game. It is a completely separate download. So... Just keep that in mind that you are installing what is essentially a new install of the game. And because it's a clean install, I mean, A, you're just going to want to make sure it works right. But B, any of your mods, any of your saves, any of your houses, anything of the sort, you're just going to want to transfer over. Um, there are great, a ton of great guides online about this. If you Google it, it'll come up. It's, um, I think, a little bit more complicated than The Sims 4 if you're familiar with that process. But... Not too hard, and I will also be linking in the description the video guide that I made on installing mods in The Sims 3 in recent time. It's also a little bit different than The Sims 4, slightly more complicated, but not too bad. And we have tons of great Sims 3 mods in The Sims resource. Actually, I did, um, right after I finished recording this, I went and downloaded a ton of mods onto my laptop. So. Let's hope that the game doesn't fry this laptop like it fried my family computer back in like 2013 when The Sims 4 wasn't out yet and I was just playing this game like every single day. I'm so sorry mom and dad for frying the family computer with my incessant Sims 3 playthroughs. Listen, it was it was the best game at the time. I'm, I stand by it. Anyway, 
um, we're getting into um, opening the game itself. As you can see, there's like a pink border around it. Don't ask me why that is, because I couldn't tell you. Frankly, it's a little strange, but the game is running, and that's all I can give you, is that the game is running, and that's... That's good. This is actually a lot of... I guess, yeah, a much easier process than it is on Windows, just because you don't really have to go in and fix the frame rate like everything else. However, that does mean that there is a lot less, um, I guess, customizability in the Mac version of the game, simply because you can't go in and adjust the frame rate because in the Windows version you can cap it so that it doesn't get too high. And you can adjust the game so that it recognizes your specific graphics card. And in this version, in the Mac version, you can't make those adjustments. So another heads up, if you're someone who has two different operating systems like me, they're going to run differently. If you really want to have those customizations, but you have a MacBook, you're going to have to boot camp your computer. It's a long process. <laughs> I don't know if I'd recommend it. I did it for years and then I finally just cracked and got a PC because I got tired of it. But if you really, really, really want all the customizability and features of a um, Windows computer without having to buy a separate computer, I would say absolutely just go <laughs> bootcamp your computer. Windows 10 is a free install. And I mean, obviously, you know, do so at your own risk. It's, it's a little challenging and I definitely uh, fucked some things up when I was doing it, but it is an option for you if that's the route that you like to take, but this is a Mac video, so this is just, you know, straight up Mac install. Here I am just picking a world and just clicking through. Do you guys remember these interactive uh, loading screens? They're so fun. They're still laggy. I don't think they're ever going to stop being laggy, but I love them. I never turn them off. I feel like everyone I know is like, just turn them off. It makes your game like load way faster. But I was like, I love the game. I It's my little fun mini game. It's like, um... It's like Where's Waldo, except it is with The Sims. And what else could I possibly want in my game? It also, yeah, it does lag a lot, which is really annoying, but it's fun. I like the I like the screens. You can also turn them off, heads up. Pro tip, yeah, you can turn these off in your settings. And you can also turn off any other um, in-game advertising because if you don't turn them off, then um, in your, for example, I'll show you in Create a Sim, you will still see the little like things that you can buy on the shop even if you're just playing your game and if your computer connected to the internet it will continue to show those things unless you opt out of it so highly recommend you opt out of those things while wow, this is taking forever i really thought this loading screen was going to be moving faster now i'm starting to regret not just turning them off oh there we go look at sunset valley it's beautiful i mean it's still loading a little bit but that's just how the game is. I love this game so much. Look how beautiful it is. Ugh. Miss you, Sunset Valley, every day. And I don't have to miss it anymore because I can just keep playing it. Um, here we are just going to create a sim. As you can see, the game is running fine. It's still, I mean, a little laggy, but I frankly don't ever expect The Sims 3 not to lag. It is a game that, from what I've read from a game dev perspective, is just really, really complex and hard for a lot of computers to run. So you do have a better shot with a newer computer, but it's just not going to be easy, I think, regardless of your operating system or your um, computer setup. There's always going to be some issues with this game just because of the way that it was built. And that's a little unfortunate. I totally get it, but just to know, yeah, you're never going to have this game running totally, totally perfectly smoothly, but you can get it running really well. And this Mac version seems to be running pretty well, honestly. Yeah, there's a little bit of a lag issue. Um, there you, up there you can see all the things you can buy from the store if you want. Um, again, I suggest turning those off just so you don't accidentally click something and it takes you out of the game to like go to a site. Um, I also think it's really funny how a lot of these uh, clothes that are meant for the... Um, <laughs> they were really trendy at the time the game came out, which is 2008, but it's just funny how like fashion trends are coming back around, so now all these like outfits that like in the mid 2010s were kind of cringe or now like really cute again. Just a fun little thing that I've noticed. And yeah, here I'm just quickly customizing the sim, but as you can see, it's running pretty smoothly. Um, I think that the 64 bit version is definitely the way to go on a Mac. I, I mean, Origin won't even let you install the 32 bit version, but if you're trying to install it any other way, um, I think from what I've read, Mac, Mac OS Catalina, like anything before that, can run 64-bit games, but anything past that, you're just, your computer won't know how to run them. 
It's just one of the things about having a Mac, and I, I totally get it as someone who loves Macs. <laughs> like, I really enjoy my MacBook. I love using it, but there's definitely some downsides to it for sure, and that is for sure one of them, which is just like, man, I really can't do <laughs> as much gaming on this as I would like, so. I'm glad that EA took the time to port this over to newer MacBooks. I mean, it was pretty recent. It was um, about six months ago, but I'm glad they took the time regardless because I think that this is a pretty important move to helping everybody keep playing their Sims games, even when things get updated. I would also say, yeah, just be careful with how many mods you install, stuff like that. If your computer is you know, older, you may have to upgrade it. It's just kind of a fact of computing. Um, but I would say that the 64-bit version of this game is, I mean, A, if you're if you're on a updated Mac, required, but it also does run really well. Actually, I think, in my opinion, runs a little bit smoother than my Windows version, probably because I also have less mods in it at this point, but it is still pretty smooth, and I think it runs smoother than I ever remember it running back in the day, so. Yeah, that is how you install the 64-bit version of The Sims 4 on Mac. Let me know if you guys want to see how to install mods onto a Mac. It is basically the same as Windows, but there are some slight differences or anything else when it comes to The Sims 3. Have a great day.